Hi guitarlings, I'm Gray at Hub Guitar. We're here to do a beginner level ragtime piece. And this piece first showed up in a awesome book called The New Art of Ragtime Guitar. So if you want to study this style in depth, definitely recommend you pick up that book. It's available on Amazon. Uh, not only does it have about maybe a dozen or so ragtime tunes, but it's got a lot of really in-depth information about technique and all kinds of stuff that you just wouldn't really be able to find elsewhere. So that's kind of been a go-to resource for me in uh, teaching this lesson. I think that you'll find it useful as well. So a few things about ragtime guitar. Uh, the first thing is that there's going to be a tendency towards kind of faster tempos. So um, there's a contradiction as a learner where you don't really want to play faster than you're able to because it'll just be sloppy and your technique will have issues. So you, you want to practice this at a nice and slow uh, tempo, but then as you get the feel of it, you're going to speed it up bit by bit, never pushing yourself beyond what you're capable of. The other thing is that we're going to play most ragtime with a swing feel. So that means that eighth notes which you can see on your uh, tablature example, instead of being perfectly even like this, da, 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 they're gonna be swung, which means the first one's gonna be longer than the second. So da, 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 da. and uh, you can you can just sort of in your head kind of tap along the rhythm. You'll you'll quickly get a feel for the rhythm. It's the same feel that's used in a lot of styles like blues and and so on and so forth. So it's got a bit of a swing to it, so don't play it like a classical guitar player. First up, we're going to study the first two measures of this piece because I firmly believe that if you can get those down, you're going to get almost everything you need for your right hand. So our thumb has an important job in ragtime guitar where it's going to tend to play each of the bass notes. And that's going to give a nice driving sound to the bass line. You don't want to mix in your index finger in there and get the bass line uh, messed up. Your thumb should basically be playing all of the bass notes as much as possible. That's what's going to give it the sound that you're looking for. And uh, for the other parts of the right hand, you're probably not really going to need your pinky, but your index, middle, and ring fingers can be used to play the other notes. And you want to try to share the work a little bit, except for what we mentioned about the thumb. We, we don't want to just try to approach this with, with, with two or three fingers. We want to try to use as much of them as possible. So to start, we've got a G7 chord going to a C chord. Now, when you see this G7 chord, you might think, wait a minute, uh, that's not the G7 chord I learned in preschool. That will be the G7 chord that you often see in guitar books. Personally, I actually really like this voicing of G7. It's a different way to play this same chord, and I think it sounds much kind of richer. I don't really like guitar chords that have notes that, that go too high in a lot of cases. So we need third fret, nothing on the fifth string, third fret of the fourth string, open third string, third fret of the second string. And then you can sort of consider the open E string as a sort of dangling accessory to this chord because it does get mixed into that measure. And the pattern goes like this for the first measure. Again. And again. So you can hear this sort of bass pattern underlying that with the thumb and we're mixing in some of the chords. Some of the chord notes get mixed in there. So if you're already feeling like, whoa, this is a challenge, you want to slow that way down and just stick to one measure until your right hand knows what's going on. Because as you work through this piece, your left hand is going to encounter new challenges and, and chords and your right hand is going to have to keep up. So one of the best things you can do is start to build your fundamental assets, which means maybe just building that right hand pattern without worrying too much about playing the whole tune. Or maybe studying through the chords and making sure that you feel comfortable changing chords because the whole tune is based on a handful of chords. So first measure again, second measure goes with C. And all together, first and second measure. Notice that we have a little chromatic note there on the second fret of the sixth string at the end of measure two. And that, because that note is going to resolve back to the G on the third fret for the G7 chord, which is immediately to follow. Which makes that two-measure chunk a great chunk to practice over and over again. 
it's musically satisfying, it's complete, you can get that right hand pattern. So I definitely think it's a great idea. Just do measures one and two over and over again until you feel like you've got it. Now, measures three and four are almost the same. All we do is we put, we add on to our C chord, we add a G on the third fret of the first string, and that's still a C chord, but now it's a C with a G in the melody. So slight variation. And I think you'll notice if you look forward in this tune that not only does that first two measures repeat for three and four, but that's basically what five and six are made of, and then later on, nine and 10. So almost half of this tune is based on those two measures, which is another reason why it's a great idea to get those down before you move on. So here's measures four and five. Only one note is different. We're just sliding up chromatically to the fourth fret. So we're gonna maintain our C shape and play it with that third finger that had been playing the bass of the C chord because we're sliding up to a D7 chord, which is very similar to the C shape. And we just gotta add our pinky in on the fifth fret of the third string to make that a full on D7. And then we're going to do this really interesting thing. So we're gonna go into that a little bit. So. Uh, the book, The New Art of Ragtime Guitar, suggests that you do a thumb over here to get this chord and then do a bar. This is the G7 on measure 8. And uh, I found that that was a bit tricky given my bag of tricks that I have available and I decided I'm going to do it with a bar chord. And the reason I thought that was tricky is because there's a new technique here that, that I myself hadn't really encountered before I picked up this book. So while your finger is hammering on one string, you're going to play a bass note with your thumb. And there's a special note in the book about this technique. It's a bit tricky for coordination because your left and right hand are both doing pretty distinctive things in that moment. But with a little bit of practice, you can definitely get that down. So practice that over and over again. Now you can also do the thumb over on the third fret and then bar frets three and of strings one and two, but that's a kind of a, a challenge for the thumb over technique because you've also got to have this note on the, this is the another G on the fifth fret of the fourth string. Uh, or you can do it like I do it and you can just bar across the third fret. And then we've got a little chromatic line going open E, second fret of the E string, and back to our comfortable G7. So measures one through eight. I love to take this section of the tune, this eight measures, and just drill it over and over again. I highly recommend that with my students because as you build confidence in a small section, it's gonna uh, make you feel more motivated to finish the thing rather than just trying to tackle it all head on. As we go to measure nine and 10, we find it's just a repeat of measures one and two. And the same for the next measure. This is measure 11. The only thing that's different from this G7 chord is that I'm gonna throw in an open E string at the end. I'm going to let that E string hang over measure 12. And measure 12 has that technique again where we have to simultaneously do a hammer on and play a bass note with our th thumb of the other hand at the same time. That's a bit tricky. So practice that over and over again. Take it out of its context. So just play the open string and try to practice doing the hammer on and the thumbed bass at the same time. and soon your left and right hands will coordinate and you'll feel more comfortable doing that. My favorite measure is probably measure uh, 13, which has this chromatic kind of line going up with the diminished chord and it's not too difficult to play. Uh, but what I do think is essential for this measure is to thumb over the first fret of the E string to make your F chord. Because if you try to do this with three individual fingers of the left hand, you're gonna kind of make it very difficult to switch to the next part of the chord. So use your thumb 
and uh, hang it over the first fret of the big string and that's going to be your bass and then you're going to put your index finger on the first fret of the second string and your middle finger on the second fret of the third string so that's the kind of beginning of the f chord but the full chord has another f note on the third fret of the fourth string so all together you should have f nothing f a c or one nothing three two one that's your chord pattern and if you're having trouble with that you want to do a lot of catch and release here let it go and play it again and I myself was actually having trouble doing this thumb over because it's not a technique I've ever put a lot of thought into and so what I did to get good at it fast enough to do this video was I did a lot of arpeggios with this chord so I would thumb over and play my arpeggio and you see that gives each finger individual practice at pressing and holding and releasing each of those notes so that may be pretty comfortable doing that so first two beats F and then F sharp diminished and back to our C chord now on the C chord we have a weird thing happen which is that we have an A note in the C chord on the second fret of the third string so I think the best and smoothest way to do that is to play your C chord with fingers one two and three in the position that you would normally have them index finger on the first fret of the second string middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string and third finger on the third fret of the fifth string and then when you get to that A note on the second fret of the G string just let your middle finger sort of fall down onto the second fret of the G string and that's going to get you your A and then we've got to go to our D7 which is the same shape so we slide up to the fifth fret and then back to G7 and then we've got this nice little turnaround and if you want you can maybe slow down right there to give a little bit more emphasis or you could kind of quiet down a little bit or you could just drive right through it at full speed kind of up to you there so that's the end of the first repeat so then it goes back to the beginning and uh, this time when it gets to that end of the repeat instead of going to the one we go to the two which is a little bit of a different turnaround because we're going to a different chord we're going to d7 so the first beat of that turnaround is frets one and two just like in a c major chord then two open strings and the next two beats three and four now that's a little bit interesting we've got a we've got a c sharp here and we've got e here and we've got an a here so it's an A major chord, but it's in its first inversion with C sharp on the bottom. So I think that instead of trying to do, you know, these two notes and then getting to this note, it's probably better to plan on having a bar here with your index finger on the second fret. And that way you can grab both of the notes on strings three and four. But of course you need to have your third finger in place at the fourth fret before you even play that. And then you use the bar to play the note in the middle, which is the last note of that measure. So here's the turnaround. And then we go back to D7 back to G7 and we have another turnaround and then another D7 but this time we end it 3 and 5 open 3 and 3 and then here at the end if you find this is difficult which you may you can definitely slow down here so on your sheet um, I wrote a ritardando and that means that we're going to slow things down a little bit because just kind of a good moment to be dramatic and draw those chords out so sometimes we can do that we have a little bit of flexibility with the time especially if we're playing solo guitar there's nobody else who's counting on us to keep perfectly accurate time so we can mess with it a little bit so we've got the beginning of a C major chord frets one and two and then it goes to a C7 chord which is a great way to resolve to the F major chord this is F major over its fifth and then that becomes an F minor chord and I do that by keeping my third and fourth finger on the third frets of strings four and five and then barring fret one of strings two and three and then I go back to C and to C7 so here's that little ending If you slow it down quite a bit there it's going to sound great it's not something that you have to pile through at full speed so that's it very basic but really fun little ragtime tune a great introduction to the style uh, remember to pay special attention to your right hand if you can get one thing out of this tune it should be that you want that thumb kind of creating that driving bass motion 
Also make sure that you're able to fret your chords cleanly. One great way to do that is just kind of look through all the chords and practice switching back and forth to all the chords used in the tune. Uh, because those are going to become a limiting factor. It doesn't matter how great your right hand is if your left hand's having trouble keeping up with the chords. But there's no need to, you know, bash your head against the wall trying to do both things at once. Practice your right hand patterns by themselves and then practice your chords by themselves and then slowly start to put everything together and you'll have your first ragtime tune under your belt. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.